Since Vital doesn't have an effects version of its plugin, the only real way to use the effects in Vital with your own sounds is with this sampler section down here. And in this video I'm going to show you a few things that you can do with this that you might find useful. I have this raw recording here. And before importing it into Vital, I'm going to cut it exactly the way I want it to be because I can adjust the timing for the beginning of the sample in the sampler here. I'm also going to make it a bit shorter, like this. Then I can just crop this clip and import it. And now I can play it at its original pitch. Increase the volume. So now one thing you can do with your samples is to add low end. This is quite easy and very useful. You can just typically use a sine wave. And now I'm going to use an LFO on the level of this. And I can adjust the shape to whatever sample I have in here. I'll set this to envelope mode. Let's just listen to the sine wave for now. And play it at an appropriate pitch. So this is a nice low end bump. You could also use different waveforms if you wanted to have more high-end information, but for me the sine wave works well for this case. Also deactivates the repeat function down here. The next thing I like to do with this is adding transients, or transient punch rather, and this is mainly achieved by just creating a very short clicky sample. So again you could use a sine wave here or you could use any other waveform depending on the sound you're going for. So I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing here. I'm gonna use LFO2 this time on the level of this. Again set this to envelope mode. We can also play around with the tempo here and then just make a really short clicky sound. Maybe increase the pitch for this one. And you can also use another LFO on the pitch. Now you just need to make sure to make this fit with the sample you're using. And especially once we start adding the effects and we have this oscillator also run through the effects, we're gonna increase this effect quite a bit. But again, you can just play around with other waveforms. You can also just use the white noise here or the brown noise or whatever you want. And it would also uh, deactivate the phase randomization just so we have the same sound every time with this. Now heading over to the effects section, I like using a compressor. This is very useful to add attack to your sounds, especially if you're using percussive sounds. Because this is quite heavy multiband compression, this is also going to increase the noise floor. So whatever recording you're using, in my case I have a lot of noise here at the end, I would just use another LFO and use this on the level of the sampler. So you can either cut the sample a bit more beforehand and import it again, or you can just use this LFO here on the level and adjust it. So now it's a lot tighter and we don't have that much noise. But we also don't necessarily need to use the compressor on a 100% mix. Very often parallel compression is fine for this. So we can just leave this around 50%. We can also add a bit of distortion. But this is going to highly depend on what you're doing with these two oscillators and what kind of sample you have here. Sometimes you get away with a lot of distortion. Sometimes you can't really add too much or none at all. We can also hear how the effects now have affected, for instance, this short clicky sound. And also don't forget that if you don't want to run any of these through the effects, you can just set this to the direct out. Depending on what effects you're adding, you might not want to run the sine wave through all the effects and you just want to have it to the direct out so you always have a clean low end from this. So now another thing is adding an EQ. I like to use another LFO in this just to boost some of the lows and some of the highs. So let's just put it on the gain as well. And now I just want to again sort of increase the attack of the sound. So I'm going to boost the highs and the lows and then depending on the setting of the LFO I can decrease it once we reach the tail of the sound. That's why using all of the effects here in combination with the LFOs is very useful because you can control at what point of the sample the effects are happening. I also like to add reverb for this. And again, we can use an LFO here on the mix because I don't want the reverb to happen at the beginning of the sample. I just want to have it on the tail of it. And again, this is one of the advantages of using LFOs for this because we can easily control the exact time when this effect starts to happen. So now with this setting, I don't have any reverb at the beginning of the sample and then it increases over time. So we can just also set the LFO to something like this so we don't have any reverb going on for this amount of time. And then it just sort of slowly increases. 
change the settings down here, adjust the EQ of this. So it's a very nice way to add clean reverb for your samples. And so once you have found settings that work for this, you can just save this as a preset and then just swap out these samples and see if it also works for others. This is especially a nice way to create kick drums from your own recordings and you get really nice organic kicks from this. So you might also use this on more, I would say, musical or longer samples. So let's just duplicate this. And let's deactivate these for now. I'm just going to import a raw synthesized sound in this one. Put it in here and I'm going to deactivate all of this. So we have the raw sample now. Again, you could just use this to add low end to the sound. So I'm just going to use a sine wave here. Now I can adjust the LFO. For this one, I can just go through at the same volume the entire time. So this sample is in C, so I can just make sure that I'm actually playing a C on my keyboard. Because this is a rather low note, we can use a different waveform. So we get a few more harmonics, like this. Now we can also add the other effects and see if maybe the settings that we had before work for this as well. Increase the drive a bit for this. And let's actually just route this to the direct out. So this is not affected by any of the effects. Equalizer as well. And we have a bit of movement here. We can actually just set it to trigger mode so it continuously starts again. And we can also change, obviously, the shape of this LFO. Maybe just smooth it out a bit. And the same with the reverb. You probably don't want it like that. Make sure that we get the tail. So now this is kind of the before and after. So even without the reverb, this sounds pretty nice. So we could just export it like this as sort of an enhanced version of the sound and then keep on processing it. And of course you can also actually play this like you would in any other sampler here if you activate this. If you're using other oscillators, you have to adjust the pitch of them. So in this case, I'm just gonna pitch this down three octaves because the original pitch of the sample is going to be played as a C3. We need to make sure that this is not too high and it's still audible. Now you could also use the pitch wheel. So this is very useful. Uh, you can also make use of the glide function in here. So this is nice as well to be able to play around with this. And by doing this, you can essentially make use of all the effects in here to process your sounds. And it might not be the optimal workflow for you, but if you don't have any other multi effects plugins or plugins that are similar to the effects that you have in here, or if you don't have LFOs in your DAW that you can just essentially put on every plugin like in Ableton, then this might be a nice and free alternative 